we are here with our amazing faculty to first of all, help you learn these protocols and second of all, become standardized so we can provide even higher levels of clinical research and evidence to even further the mission and goal that we have here today. So what's next? Why are we here? We are here to learn about all these protocols, learn about, you know, we're starting with the history and the research and the evidence and the thought process that we use to develop it. We're going to go through each of these uh, protocols in great detail, how to take the measurements, uh, how to assess it, what was the thought behind developing these. We want to give you a practical understanding of what to do in your clinics when the patient comes to you. How do you evaluate them? We'll be talking about how to help our kids and adults breathe through the nose through physical examination of the nose. You'll all be getting a breathe scope and practicing looking in the nose and identifying things from nasal crusting to bleeding, polyps, turbinate hypertrophy deviated septum. We're going to get our gloves on and get hands on with each other to identify compensations for restricted tongue mobility, including yet unpublished research showing the impact and efficacy of the floor of mouth hold maneuver. This is not something that you can easily convey in a lecture. You have to touch and feel and see these things. Because even though we've done the research for it, you have to get hands on. You have to get in there. You have to practice. You have to implement to make it happen. And, you know, we're continuing to uh, do our research. And so we'll talk to you about what is a posterior tongue tie? Is the posterior tongue tie all the way back in the posterior aspect of the tongue? Or is the posterior tongue tie in the mid body of the tongue? We're gonna talk and learn about limitations in terms of patient selection, making sure that our patients have good tongue tone and also tongue space. We'll be looking to make sure that our patients are appropriately prepared for the release. I hope that by the end of the workshop, you'll understand that this gentleman is not ready and that you will know exactly what to do to get him from here to hear much better prepared, because I hope that all of the surgeons in the group will agree that you don't want to be cutting this tongue tie in the presence of those huge lingual veins. Rather, when you have good control on your oral function, you're able to pull back the lingual vein artery and nerve so that you can do a proper and very focused dissection. And even more than that, the patient's going to heal well because you're addressing this issue from a root cause top-down, whole-body approach. And I hope that you guys are excited to fully immerse yourselves in our pre- and post-operative protocols, understanding that the most common complaint patients have is about inflammation, proliferation, contraction, and we'll learn about things that we can do to optimize the healing and interventions, including Kenalog steroid injections that we may offer to patients who may have excessive scar tissue. For the therapists in the room, we'll be telling you how to look at our reports, what, you know, what are some key indicators in terms of you know, whether we use sutures versus periacral glue and how that might affect the kind of therapy that you'll do. You go into the muscle, for example, it may be much more painful for the patient and increased incidence of contraction. And ultimately at the root of it all, we're here to understand and remediate the root causes of dysfunction.